Hi, this is Dave Toronto. The name of this podcast is Cut Through the Noise. This podcast will primarily focus on the topic of communication specific to people, businesses, management, leadership, sales, difficult conversations, and life. We want to keep the tone of this podcast in a business casual format. The podcast will be either me or myself along with a guest or a client having spirited conversations about the subjects I just listed. We hope you enjoy it. Today's topic is going to be business development. This is a, an important topic to me because I think that the reason so many new and, and seasoned salespeople struggle is because they don't do a good job developing business in the first place. They are hired by companies to sell products and services, to hit quotas, um, to hit numbers, and very often then they don't have anyone they can even call. They don't even know what to say. They don't have the right contacts in the market, but they're tasked with closing business. They're tasked with closing business with strangers that quite frankly don't want to talk to them in the first place. Early on in my career, that's what happened to me. I got into sales because I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do. I was struggling in the restaurant business trying to find a job, a nine to five job, and I ended up somehow getting a job with a tiny little mortgage company. And it was not fun. Uh, I had fun with some of the people, but the reality is I didn't like the job. It was a sales job. Uh, I was initially asked to go out on the road uh, not knowing anything with flyers. And for the most part, I got thrown out of uh, banks and real estate offices for a bu- couple days until I just found reasons not to go out anymore. And I, and I, hid, I basically hid in the office uh, and I would do anything not to go out there, mainly because nobody wanted to talk to me. I was supposed to close business, but I didn't even know what to say. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, how to get in the door, and I didn't know how to get people to call me back, and it was a really miserable experience. And then it started to happen again in, a, in another industry when I get into the IT staffing um, field. Again, making calls, trying to close business with people that didn't know me. Uh, I was more concerned with getting them to buy something than I was understanding them, and it was incredibly difficult. And early on, our company decided, hey, let's get some sales training, which was really a colossal disaster. It was not welcomed by the people in the company initially. And and for the most part, every single time we got together, we were totally resisting it. Ironically, I ended up selling sales training later on in my career. um, And I thought I was doing something good. I thought, hey, you know what? I kind of figured this out. I figured out a way to make this work for me. Maybe I can do that for somebody else. The reality is, is when I started doing that, I realized as I was acquiring clients that the training really didn't work for them either. And the reason it wasn't working was because every one of them was coming from a different world. They had different sets of challenges that they were facing. Some, some of them had to sell to groups of people. Some of them were in one call close businesses. Some of them sold through middle layer or channels, others sold direct. But in almost every case, the training, although it sounded good, it was very, very cookie cutter, you know, and there's a, there's a million of these around, around the world, cookie cutter sales training, and it's really designed primarily to, to, to keep the franchises going. Sales training, for the most part, is just offered by, uh, like some of these global companies, so they can keep opening franchises to continue selling sales training. It's training for the, for the trainer. It's not necessarily training for the customer. So most of my time was spent helping them interpret the training for their world or customize it to their world, which is one of the reasons I got out. The real issue though was that they couldn't, and the reason it had to be interpreted was because they weren't Oftentimes, they weren't in front of the right people. They weren't selling to the right audience. They weren't having the right conversations. They were trying to close business too soon before trust was even established. Uh, They didn't have a strong network. They couldn't ask the questions they wanted to ask, even though theoretically, 
the training kind of suggested things, the reality is they were rarely in the right position to apply it. And then there are other companies out there that have internal sales training, and it's generally taught by somebody on the staff who doesn't sell anything. And the problem with that is you put an internal sales trainer in front of a, a seasoned sales team, and you know what? They lose credibility instantly because the, the team knows right out of the gate, this person has never sold anything, or this person hasn't sold anything in 10 years, so they shut down. The junior people might be open to it initially because they don't know anything, but when they realize that the training, even though it sounds good coming out of a book or, or, or you know, read off a page, it sounds good, in reality, they, when, it, when, it, when they can't apply it and they realize that the trainer can't apply it, they shut down too, and it typically doesn't work. What we gotta focus on is teaching people how to develop and maintain relationships. Business development will, will, will take care of so many of the sales problems. Sales problems have to do with money and decisions and all this stuff that gets over people not calling you back, business not closing. All that stuff, all those problems that exist on the sales side are a direct result of poor business development practices. I had them and I know a lot of people who have them. Our job when we hire sales professionals, whether it's a seasoned person or a junior person or someone who has no experience at all, is to focus on how strong their business development skills are. How strong is their network, if at all? How clearly defined are their territories, if at all? How confident are they when they talk? How confident are they in the message that you're asking them to deliver? Do they understand how to read people? Do they know how to build relationships with people? Do they know how to maintain them? Do they know how to stay in contact with people? Are they a welcome phone call or meeting? Or are they somebody that everyone else is trying to avoid? If we can work on business development skills and we can teach people how to do that, which is very, very doable, the sales are gonna come. The answers are not in the sales training. There's way too much customization required. This, the, the cookie cutter sales training that exists out there today has to be customized. There's a major level of interpretation. I remember going to a sales conference a number of years ago and I was shocked when I got there. <clears throat> there were people selling sales training who had never sold anything. I, I met one guy, he was a retired police officer who bought into this and now he was selling sales training. I thought, how can you stand up in front of the room and read this book to people and expect them to buy it. It just didn't make sense to me. So when, when I started JCE, most people knew me as a guy that had, you know, a sales guy that had sold some sales training and, and it was the last thing I wanted to do when I started the company. I just didn't want to do it because I didn't believe, I, and I still don't believe, that sales training is, is the right way to go when you initially work with a sales team of any kind. The, the right way to approach a sales team, the first thing we need to do is take a look at the quality of the management team. Do they have the right managers? And do those people even know what they're doing? And if they do, you have a chance at developing and helping out that sales team. If they've got the wrong manager, if, they, if the manager is lost for the respect of the team or the team just doesn't buy into the manager, no amount of training is going to work. All you're going to do is train people to leave. If they do have the right manager and you've got the buy-in from that manager and that's, a, and that's a person who's open to a trainer or a coach, then the first step is to help them help their people develop business. Developing business is about creating opportunity. We actually have a workshop that we, we deliver publicly called Creating Opportunities. That's what it's about. It's like planting a garden. You don't put a seed in the ground and expect the fruits and vegetables to come out in an hour. It doesn't work. You have to lay the groundwork. You have to clear the ground. You have to, you have to pull the weeds. You have to plant the seeds. You have to water it. They need sunlight over the course of days and weeks and months before the fruits and vegetables come up. They don't just pop up. But yet, we put salespeople on the phone every single day, and we put them out in the field every single day trying to get them to close business when they haven't even cleared the field yet. If you're in, the, if a, if you're in a one call close business and you're not in a sophisticated selling cycle, okay, fine, easy enough. 
But if you're like a lot of people that's selling business to business with multiple layers, multiple audiences, some people want to you know, move forward, other people struggle to make this, there's all sorts of complexities involved, then you need to have unbelievable business development skills so that when a selling opportunity shows up, you're not, you're not trying to angle your way through it. It doesn't become a high pressure situation. Selling is simply the process of helping a customer make a decision. And sometimes that decision is to buy from somebody else. So be it. If we can help our customers make decisions more easily, we're gonna sell more. If we can help them navigate a process, and it doesn't have to be a defined process, but just go through the buying experience without any stress, they're gonna buy more stuff. It's just the way it works. But that's not going to happen if you haven't done a good job developing the relationships in the first place. If you don't get in right, you're not going to close much. If you don't take the time to get to know people, if, if selling to a CEO is really the way to go to sell your product or service, then stop selling to HR because they're not going to buy anything. If selling to HR is where you need to go, then stop selling to the office manager. Stop, stop dropping cookies off to the admin if you need to be talking to the VP of sales. There's other ways that we can do it. We've got to step up our game. And if we're not comfortable putting ourselves in front of the right audience and, and, and building the right networks, then we've got to question, do we really want to do this job? Or maybe we do want to do it, but we're just not, we don't know enough about our products or services to feel comfortable getting into a conversation. Maybe that's all it is. And again, that's an overrated concern, but it's, it's a concern that I hear often. Maybe it's, I don't believe we can deliver, so I don't want to go talk to those people. Or I don't think we're better than our competition, so I'm not comfortable getting in that room. And that's the reason why sales, be, it's another reason why sales get stuck because we're selling to the wrong audience because we don't believe that we can hold our own with the right audience. If we, as sales leaders, as business leaders, if we want our sales teams to be more confident, if we want them to be more successful, we want them to perform consistently, we've got to stop throwing them on the phone or throwing them out in the field, half prepared, without a belief or conviction about our products or services, our ability to deliver, and we got to step back and we got to teach them and work with them to strategically develop relationships. I don't care if they're selling door to door in a residential environment. I don't care if they're selling to a business or a panel or a CEO or a CFO or a VP of this. I don't care. We need to do a better job teaching them how to put themselves in those situations, how to carry a conversation in those situations by, by in, in, in developing business. If we, if we are putting them in a situation where we're just tasking them with closing business, they will continue to repel people, people will avoid them, deals won't close, they will be annoying, they'll end up being treated like every other salesperson out there that's trying to close business. It's about relationships. It's about getting in right. It's about believing in yourself. It's about believing what you have to say. It's about believing in the value of your product, your service, your company, your manager, your ability to deliver. And when that's in place, sales come. If, if it's not in place, your selling is going to be inconsistent, you're going to be frustrated, and we're going, to get, we're going to continue to turn over salespeople because we haven't done them any justice by giving them a quota when, and, and not preparing them how to get in right and to establish and maintain relationships. Thanks again for listening. For more information about JCE, check us out online at jcegrp.com or follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. If there are topics that you'd like to hear us discuss in the future, we would certainly love to hear from you. Have a great day. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.